What's going on, everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another podcast episode. This is the Business and Investing Podcast, where you learn all things business and investing related. So I've had our special guest on the line before. We talked about his journey, and now he's doing something even more advanced that I think that you guys will truly benefit from. And that's why I wanted to have him on the line again. Before we hop into that, I want you to think about passive income, right? I'm a huge advocate of getting monthly checks, but imagine getting checks every single week. I personally like to get checks every single day, right? And by getting checks every single day, it allows you to fund your lifestyle, but it also allows you to fund your future and fund your family, right? And by being able to do this, you have less stress, less headaches, No, money doesn't solve everybody's problems. That's not the case. But it's sure enough, we'll relieve some of that stress. Believe me, it's like taking Advil every single day when you got a headache. Money will allow you to do things. It allows you to experience things that other people are striving to experience, but they just don't have the know-how or the funds to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I was down on Wall Street, what the the head guys in the office used to say is money is nothing but a tool that allows you to experience things if you want to go to the moon you need money if you want to have a fancy yacht you need money if you just want to sit on your behind and play video games all day you need money so that you can be able to pay your bills and eat right money is a tool that allows you to experience things and receiving checks constantly with minimal effort on your behalf is the key to the whole thing that's called passive income right so you got to be able to bring in checks do the work once and get paid for the work over and over and over again what we're going to talk about today is like having rental properties on steroids all right imagine having one single family residential property but getting 16 32 checks or more every single month but you don't have the you're not under the same ramifications of an apartment complex. It's called shared living. Huge, huge space. Not a lot of people talking about it. In fact, my man Idris uh, introduced it online uh, not so long ago. And with that being said, I wanted to get him on a podcast. I reached out to him and said, I need to have you on. Let's bring this to the world. You know, I, I think that this is a, a fantastic opportunity for everybody watching this. Idris, man, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, bro? Okay, okay. So, you know, I grew up, I was probably a parent's dream. I was a straight-A student, went to college, studied engineering, then I got into finance, went all the way to Wall Street. But throughout the time, I always wanted to invest in real estate. So real estate was something of mine that I've always done part-time. You know, I ended up having a very successful healthcare practice. Of course, what Jamel alluded to, you know, I ended up going to prison as a result of that. I had some fraud going on throughout my medical practice. So after having everything taken away from me, during that time period, I was thinking, okay, what am I going to do with my life? Coming out of prison, I had no money whatsoever. My credit was destroyed because I hadn't made any payments on everything in two years. The one thing I knew I could count on was real estate. And when I came out, I just hit the ground running. And as a result of my creative real estate practice, that's how I was able to bounce back. And then once I moved to Atlanta, I met Genevieve. And Genevieve, she had, she said, well, I'm not really a real estate investor. We were at a conference. And she was telling me about what property she had. She said, well, I do have this property, and I rent out the rooms. And I said, you know what? I said, you are a real estate investor. And as a matter of fact, this concept that you're doing, especially in the marketplace right now, is something that there's a need for because of the affordable housing crisis. And for two, it's mutually beneficial because you're able to receive a hefty amount of cash flow. So I just said, you know what? We need to double down on this because realistically someone can create financial freedom to where they can leave their job within 12 months if they're consistent with this business model that's right man when, when i was living up in uh brooklyn we used to call this particular model rooming houses right right, right. i'm not sure if this is the same exact model but genevieve why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got started doing this sure uh thank you jamel for having me today 
Um, really how I got started is um, long ago I always wanted to be an investor, I just didn't know how. So I bought my first house for me and my son and I knew I wasn't going to stay there long so I ended up moving out into an apartment and I rented it on Section 8. I did that for seven years, made some money but not a lot of money and then I really just happened upon uh, the shared living. Uh, my mother, she has a background in mental health and so I originally put her in a care home. Um, where she was supposed to be safe, you know, she's um, had trouble um, since I'm nine um, just with uh, being in and out of hospitals and, uh, you know, just just an erratic uh, background. And uh, mm -hmm. at one point I was in foster care. Uh, we were in a shelter before. And so I wanted to get to a place where I could help my mother. So when I put her in the care home, they let me down and uh, they actually took her money uh, put her in a, a shelter where she didn't gain entry. So I spent my birthday looking for my mother. This is about maybe 2013, I believe. And so it, at any rate, um, I, I still had the, uh, the rental um, on Section 8. And so during that time, I was just in such distress looking for my mom. I felt <clears throat> like God gave me the idea that I could, you know, do it myself. I could put her in, in my home where she could never be put out and all of that. And so I ended up transforming the home into room rentals. So I, my mother was there. And then now I have a lady that at this point, um, she's been there, um, I believe, headed into about 11 years now. But basically what I was able to do is help other women uh, that were, you know, struggling maybe with a, a relative that has a background in uh, mental health. And then it just kind of went on from there. I um, ended up moving into another home. It was a four bedroom home to take care of my grandma. And so when that transpired, I ended up, it was a lady that was sleeping on somebody's couch. And uh, I was like, you can come stay with me. I'm like in this big old, you know, four bedroom home. So I rented a room to her initially. And then uh, she was a veteran. She stayed with me seven years. And so all of this kind of manifested. I think that I really didn't know what I was doing initially. I was just helping people. But then I said, mm -hmm. wow, you know, once I started renting out different rooms, I said, this is kind of, you know, paying my bills. And then in addition to that, it's like a win-win because I'm helping people. So that's kind of how it all got started from there. So how do you turn this into a business, right? That's what we want to talk about today. Um, but before we jump into that, what are some of the mindset things that people need to keep in mind in order to be able to achieve doing this? I would say you have to have a heart for people. But then additionally, go ahead and put your business hat on because I led with my heart for a long time. So it wasn't really about the money initially. But then as I began to, you know, um, open my mind up and also meeting Idris, you know, with some of his concepts, I was like, you know, basically he was telling me, you know, you're really onto something where, you know, you can expand. And so, you know, I can kind of let you uh, let Idris tell you some of, of what he shared with me and how. You know, we began to see this as a truly uh, uh, a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say <laughs> this is what I love so much about it. There are so many entry points and anyone can get started no matter um, where they are. OK, you know, one of the entry points are obviously if you own real estate, you can obviously, you know, um, rent out these rooms yourself. Another thing is, and this is how we acquire smart properties, is a lot of people are familiar with Airbnb arbitrage. Well, we're doing the same thing, and it's basically rental arbitrage. We'll mm -hmm. do, we'll have a master lease with the landlord, and then we'll sublease the rooms, and they know exactly what we're doing. So that's another way. And then for other individuals who may not, um, you know, they may not have the financial resources they need to get started, they can actually partner up with landlords. You know, maybe approach a landlord and say, look, I have a way where I can help you make uh, extra money on top of what you're currently making in your rental. Um, you know, we can partner up. And then this is my idea. So there's, it, you can just be as creative as you need to. And the wonderful thing about this business, like Genevieve said, you are helping people. And I have various business models as well. You know, one of our business models is for individuals who've been um, discharged from mental health hospitals. Of course, that's Genevieve's background. You know, another thing can be uh, people who are homeless 
But and just because people are homeless don't mean they don't have money. A lot of them right. have SSI and disability. So that's a guaranteed check that comes in every single month that can help stabilize them. Now we can go more high end as well because I'm exploring a business model with a um, million dollar houses as well that we're doing. You know, another business model that I'm exploring is people who come into Atlanta for cosmetic surgeries. They need a place to where they can rest. They need a recovery place. So we're, we're creating some recovery houses as well. Um, another thing that people are doing are, um, you know, corporate rentals, for example, they may get referrals from insurance companies. So an insurance company, um, you know, they're getting their house built. That might take six or nine months. They may place them somewhere. So there's so many different business models with this. And it's just about being very creative and just being able to identify opportunities and just running the numbers. You know, we're, we're doing the same thing that we do with traditional real estate. This just, for me, the way that I, the reason why I love it so much is basically I'm able to receive multi-family income on a single family residence. That is so Boom. strong to me. Yep. Absolutely, man. And, and you also have midterm rentals as well. You know what I mean? Where you rent, you know, you know, longer than short term rentals, but not quite long term. You right. Know I mean? That's, that would be considered like a month to month. Right. You know, that, that type of feel. So there's a lot of opportunities to make cash flow. But what I love what you said about um, this entire thing the most is you get multi family checks on single family houses. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about, right. man. <laughs> Passive so, income. So let me That's say the name this. of the game. Let yep. me say this. Once I um, discovered that I was making more money with um, the room rentals, I said I'll never rent to one family mm. or one person because it just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, I'm able to make more money. And even if you have an occupancy, if you're dealing primarily you want to go with a four bedroom, um, that's going to, you, you know, give you a higher yield. Mm -hmm. But even if you have one vacancy, it's not like, oh, I'm about to lose my house or you can't make a, a mortgage payment or the rent payment because you've got three people there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, yeah. And it's so many people out here that are looking for room rentals. It's not just, um, what I started out with, um, with the mental health background, but you have people who are going through a divorce. You mm -hmm. know, we've got one guy, he's a salesman and, uh, you know, he just needs somewhere. It's, it's cheaper than what is it? The Econo lodges, you know, they're right. paying mm -hmm. those efficiency they're places. They're paying so much money. Right. And so they're actually saving. And then, you know, they, we have nice houses where, you know, they can be comfortable and, um, back kind of with the mental health, they do better in a shared living space, you know, mm -hmm. so you're actually putting people together that can comprehend and understand one another and uh, they're happy. And my, when I set out to do this, as I really start taking things seriously, you know, I set out for people to feel like they're home away from home. So if you find yourself, you know, in a situation where, you know, you can't go back home or you're displaced or whatever has transpired, you know, I want you to feel like you're a home away from home. And uh, so, yeah, it's just really been a, a blessing financially as well as, you know, from an aspect of helping others. As you were speaking, I was sitting here thinking about people that have fires in their properties. You know, how, how can somebody, you know, and, and this is just my, my thought just kind of coming out of my mouth right now. But um, somebody, if we target, let's say, fire damaged properties, to purchase from people those people need somewhere to stay they can stay at one of your properties mm -hmm. maybe you can purchase the properties from them fix it up and then do the same thing on those properties that's just another play right oh, yeah. but there's a the whole point is there's a ton of opportunities right. when it comes to something like this quick question for you what are some of the obstacles people are going to face when getting started doing this what are some of the things that you need need to keep in mind maybe it's uh getting licensed maybe it's uh registration maybe it's you know um you know sometimes people won't pay i know you guys are evicting a tenant right now what are some of the obstacles people are going to go through in order to get started doing this i think on the front end um one thing that i've been successful with is just kind of doing an assessment you know having a conversation learning a little bit about their background uh, making sure from the aspect that they have mental health issues that they're highly functioning they take their meds um, another thing is about location too. You want it to be somewhere where they're closer to the, you know, the bus, 
uh, route because typically the, they don't drive. Um, and then I, I guess Idris, I know he 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 knows a little bit more about the the uh, logistics as it relates to like. Uh, I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think, um, I think so. One of the things that you want to identify is um, for one. So this is this is something huge right here. OK, is you want to identify areas that either a don't have an HOA or b have a weak HOA, because if they have a strong HOA. Um, <laughs> this is not going down. I can tell you oh, that no. right now. Yeah, uh, so you need. So, so that's one of the things that you want to do. Um, another thing, you, you do have to run the numbers as well. So what I like to do is, um, kind of like what Genevieve said, my preference is four bedrooms or above. Because once you get to about four bedrooms or above, uh, if you do have any type of a vacancy, you know you're going to, you're still going to cash flow. You know you're going to break even, but you may be in cash flow. And actually, off two people, a lot of times you can actually break even, depending on um, what your price points are. My favorite type of house, if I'm looking to maximize cash flow, now, of course, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, so I know um, all of you are watching, you're all over the country, but I like older working class neighborhoods and the reason why i like older working class neighborhoods is generally um in older neighborhoods the neighbors they kind of watch out for each other another thing is you know they make sure it's not a lot of crime and stuff going on but at the same time those rental prices and the prices of those houses are less than like a new construction or newer areas yeah. So that's why I like that just from a cash flow perspective. Now, some of the other obstacles you're going to have is you are dealing with different people with different personalities and they are going to clash. And you have to have a system in place um, to be able to circumvent that. Another thing is you need to put people kind of on a schedule uh, in terms of, you know, them doing their laundry, you know, cleaning up, things of that nature. So basically, you need to kind of set forth the structure of how that house is going to be ran. You know, um, another thing is you need to have a liaison between yourself and the individuals who are in your house. And one of the things that you need to keep in mind also is you don't want to refer to them as tenants. You want to refer to them more as members. And the reason why is because when they're tenants, you're, you're going with um, landlord law. So basically, if they do miss a payment, you have to evict them. And that's something that um, you want to avoid is going through the eviction process because if you're anywhere like we are, the courts are backed up in terms of evicting people. We haven't had to go through the eviction process with anyone whatsoever. You know, when they haven't paid or even if we just want to kick them out, you know, we'll normally give them to the end of the week and, you know, they're gone. So we haven't had a problem with that. What would be the, the idea behind calling them members versus tenants? All right. So what we do is we have a we have an agreement that we give them. OK. And I want you to think about it similar to like a YMCA membership. If you have a YMCA membership and you don't pay that bill, you don't gain entry until the YMCA. Same thing with a hotel. If you don't pay your bill by a certain date or whatever, you do not gain entry into that room. Right. So that's the same. Th that's the same thing with us or whatever. You know, you will, uh, your membership will be over, and then we have electronic locks. The code will be changed. Got it. So it's almost like a a guest staying versus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a tenant. Correct. Right? And that's why you call it members. So you say our guests or our members yes. of this property. And that, yep. and that would prevent you from having to go through landlord law in, in your particular area. Got it. Got it. Understood. But well, let me give so, a disclaimer or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every area is different. We're not attorneys. Mm -hmm. We're not financial advisors. We're not CPAs. So make sure yeah. that you follow, you know, the land of your law in your particular area. Because I'm just giving you our experience here in the metro Atlanta area. Okay, I can't speak for how it is all across the country. So make sure you talk with a competent attorney or somebody who does this. That's right. We're also not trying to give any financial advice either. We're not financial advisors. You got to figure that out on your own. Right. Give disclaimers. But right. um, let's talk about getting started with this, right? So let's talk about a step-by-step -step process. How can our listeners 
go from where they are to where they want to go using this particular method. Okay, so we've established for ourselves, it's called the 4F framework, all right? The first F stands for find. You have to find a property, okay? Now, you can find properties many different ways, Zillow, Craigslist, driving for dollars, networking, all the different ways, okay? Now, like I said, for what Genevieve and I do, we look for four bedroom houses, and we look to negotiate directly with the owner of that house. So it really depends on how we're going to, um, how we're going to access that house or whatever. So that's finding the property. All right. So the next F stands for fund or financing. Before we jump into that, what are you saying to, let's say, uh, um, an arbitrage on an arbitrage type of deal? What are you saying to the landlord to make them feel comfortable with doing this type of transaction? Okay. You want to let them know that, Genevieve? Yeah. Well, we let them know that we're, um, you know, housing solution. Uh, we solve uh, the problems of the landlord, and uh, if they're looking to, um, you know, not have any issue with getting their monies, we guarantee the, uh, their money uh, monthly from us, so we're mm -hmm. the guarantor, and that uh, only our uh, guests will, will reside in the home, and we make sure that the maintenance is done, you know, make sure that their home is kept in pristine condition. So we're actually their tenant. Um, Got it. And, yeah, so that's how we uh, typically present that. We let them know, um, you know, I've had over nine years now a relationship with Wellstar. Uh, we have individuals that are, you know, healing um, and uh, need somewhere to stay. Um, and then from different uh, various backgrounds, it could be veterans um, and it could be just your average uh, individual that, um, you know, works at Amazon or, you know, um, but we we vet these individuals out, and, and we're we're guaranteeing that um, you know. You know what I good on our end. You know what I really like about this, when you present something like this to the seller, and you explain to them, look, we're we're you know focused on providing housing for vets, for mental um, health patients, for nurses, for whatever. Mm -hmm. These are all professionals or someone who, who's contributed in some way or they're, you know, they're sick in some way right. um, and they need a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So anybody with some sort of compassion mm -hmm. will be willing to do something like this versus you saying, hey, I'm going to just rent this out to any anybody that is randomly walking right. up we the street. Right, we just trying to get to the money. money. Right, right, right. 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 They, so I love the fact that you're positioning these things in front of this person, letting them know who's going to be in the property, and you're right. arbitraging it. So it really, it's almost like doing a lease purchase, right? You lease option a uh, property from a seller, and then you don't take ownership of it. You simply rent and you control it, and yep. then you just pay them their due, yep. and then you make yours. Are there any other cases where you might split the money with the seller? Um, Have you ever done that? We, Fortunately for us, we, we, right, we have not had to. However, I advise people who have limited resources, don't wait. Get started right now and split it with them. Say, right. basically, look, I will help you make more money off your rental property, and here's how. My goal is for you to maximize cash flow, and especially if you're not in a financial position where you're not bringing anything to the table, and for you to build equity in your house. That's what I want to do for you. And then this is my plan of how I want to do this. You can do this and you can be successful because remember, the majority of the people probably will say no, but you only need one. You only need one person to start off with and then they're going to refer you to other people. You can easily go to um, you know, a landlord meeting and present to them what you're doing to help them maximize cash flow. And I, and I believe that will go over very well. So what do those numbers look like? How many offers, so to speak, are you making to these landlords in order to be able to get one? So we'll schedule, there's been times where we went and scheduled um, to go and view the properties. So maybe six appointments in a day and uh, mm -hmm. one or two out of those are going to 
have interest because that that's that has definitely happened. Really? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's better than wholesaling, man. Because with wholesaling, you're looking at fifteen to twenty five offers before you get a contract, right? And most in most cases, for somebody that's brand new, guys right. like me and Idris, and you, uh, Genevieve, who understand real estate investing and can talk, we can lower that number drastically. Right. But for most people just getting started you're looking at 15 to 25 offers before you even get a contract closed right so um with this you're talking about out of six you might get one or two that's a really high turnover rate you know right. you figure you you do one of these a week you, you're pretty good yeah. at the end Absolutely. of the day we you have know? we have yeah. about and, uh, three and one uh i think it was like almost really in a week's time we were in negotiations um what was interesting is Every single house was financed differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was, you um, know, yeah. Let, we, we're gonna, let, let's jump into funding in just a second. Okay. Real quick, I'm guessing, and, and this is just, you know, you know, me understanding what you're saying. I just want to provide a little bit of sauce for for the audience so that they can understand how to find these, right? So, okay. what I would do if I were you right now, I would go to Zillow or go to Craigslist. Go to the for rent section. Go on, join these uh f- you know these facebook groups uh that you know they maybe they focus on landlords maybe right. they focus on rental properties put yeah, yourself in front of people rent who property. have rent f- focus on the rental market that's what you want to do put right. yourself in front of these people start communicating with these people so you drive down the street you see a for rent sign yep. contact that person <laughs> you know that's things me, like that <laughs> that's right you know this is how you put yourself in the path of money Right. When it comes to these types of opportunities, yep. you got to put yourself in front of these people. Yep. So since your market is the rental market, focus on the That's rental right. problem. Exactly. The rental problem is collecting one check, right? right? And if you if you collect, if you can offer an opportunity to make a little bit more than that one check to a landlord, the chances of you being able to do business with them. Let's say a landlord is making a thousand dollars a month. You say, hey, how about how about I pay you fifteen hundred? There you go. You know, but then you know after running your numbers, you can make three thousand or four thousand. Does that fifteen hundred dollars make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So this is the way you gotta be thinking, putting yourself in front of these types of people and offering them benefit mm-hmm. to do, you know, offering them a way to do better than what they're doing right now. Arbitrage your way into it. You don't have to you don't need any money to do it. And then on top of that, you get to make cash flow off of their asset. Boom, yeah. that's how you do it. So right. how do you fund this, man? Hey, well, right. Jamel, I want to also say, you got to think that the first is coming. I'm sorry, Idris. The first is coming, and they know that they've got to pay that mortgage, um, yep. you know, the the owner. So the you're the putting mortgage. them in a position, you know, to solve that problem. And, and then you're letting them know you're going to take on all of the accountability. So they don't mm. even have to worry about it. They just got their money coming. So I'm just saying, as far as that talk off, when you're letting them know that you're going to take care of everything, they don't have to be running and see about maintenance and this and that, you know, unless it's over a certain number. Uh, we typically, as long as it's mm-hmm. under $100, we'll, we will handle the maintenance and everything. So you're also putting them in a situation where, man, I don't have to worry about the clogged toilet and all this and that, you know, so that's a, another little piece or tip um, that you're adding value to the owner. Go ahead, Idris. Now, I'm about to drop a bomb. I'm only doing this because Jamel's my man. I'm only letting, look, all right, let me tell y'all a highly motivated group of people who you can talk to. People who are getting fed up with Airbnb. Go to a Facebook, go to an Airbnb Facebook group, find people who are complaining because their income is volatile. It's so much work finding cleaners. Somebody just tore my house up and everything. Find people who are complaining and inbox them and offer them your solution. That's how we acquired our six bedroom house. It was a 70 year old couple, they're in their seventies and they got tired of the up and downs of Airbnb. They're like, you know what? We just want some consistent income. And that's what we presented. Here's the funny part, in the ad, it said, uh, what did it say? It's- No Airbnb and no home, whatever. They was like, and, and I was kind of concerned to come right, reach no out. Arbitrage. Basically they were saying no arbitrage. Yep, yep, right, yep. Yes. So, but 
once Genevieve and I talked to them about what we're doing and everything, they were like, yes, yes, this is Let something the guard that down. Yeah, this is, I mean, this, but, but here's the most beautiful part about this also. The house was furnished. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why people usually have issues with Airbnb because of poor management, right? The person right. who's doing it, mm-hmm. they saw some some somebody on online say that you can do this, and they try to do it. Then they don't really have any responsibility or any um any care to care right. for somebody else's property, you know, right. right? And and it's uh, like and being in the problem. hospitality business, you know. Yep, it is. That's it is. that's a lot of work. <laughs> it is right. for sure, you know. So. You know, again, focus on landlords, guys. I even think, you know, going back to the time of the month thing, right? I I think there's a specific time in a month that you can target these people where they have a a larger headache, right? It may not be around the first because they're starting to collect money, but go midway through the month, right? Where they start to have some headaches. The parents are calling them 10 o'clock on a Friday night, right? Right. Um, You want to... Put yourself in front of these people at the right time, the right moments, and present these opportunities. Mm-hmm. You can do this. Anybody on the line watching this podcast or listening to this podcast can do this, right? right. You just have to be willing to put in the work. Mm-hmm. One more tidbit before we, we move on to funding. Okay. Um, here's a way to eliminate having to go to each property and collect rent. There's apps out there. I'll, I'll link one or two apps in the description box okay. of this podcast. Where I collect rent checks every single month. Never have I never have to ever see the tenant. I never have to visit a property to pick up some money. Right. They pay through the app and it's done on autopilot. It's automatically done. They get email notifications. You have to pay this rent. They get uh, text messages. Mm-hmm. They get notifications, uh, letting them know when the rent is coming up. And I never have a problem collecting rent because of it. So I'm gonna link two apps that I like. Uh, below in the description box so you guys can can check that out as well um so how do you get into funding these types of opportunities i, I know we kind of dabble into right. the arbitrage thing which is one way right. right but what are some other ways to do this okay so so this is my preferred way of um of talking to these landlords the first my first go-to what i look to do i don't look to actually um try to just do the master lease. I try to do a lease option. That's my first go-to is, is to try to do a lease option. I would try to do, um, so let me tell you what I'll say to him. I'll say, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Landlord, um, I was looking for a long-term lease of at least two years. Is that something that you would consider? And then I'll put, um, assuming all of my payments come in on time, would you consider selling to me at the end of that term? They're gonna say yes or no. So if they say yes, we're going into it like it's a lease option. If they say no, then that's where we're going to go into it like it's a master lease. So the different ways that we've used to kind of fund some of our properties, um, of course, one of them Genevieve already had, so she has a mortgage on that house. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the second way is we, we did use some of our own money. Um, we used, basically, it was a credit card. So we used a credit card for the security deposit and first month's lease. You know, another method that we did, we actually did bring in an investor. So we knew somebody, um, you know, they had extra, um, what was it, $10,000? Yeah, it was $10,000. $10, they had extra $10,000, and we used that to fund our, uh, to fund what we're doing. So there's a variety of ways of how you can actually fund this. Another house that I'm looking at right now as we speak is a subject two. So I'm looking at um, acquiring this subject too and looking at doing the same thing with it as well. So all of these different techniques that you learn of how to acquire real estate, you can use those and uh, your disposition is just going to be the shared living space environment. And what, I, what I'm hearing is you don't necessarily need to have a marketing budget to do this if you're reaching out to the right people and then funding it. You're basically using creative finance in order to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you know, I'm a huge advocate of that. I love right. creative finance, right. not having to go to the bank, but going to the bank is an option as well. So there's right. uh, a plethora of different ways to fund these types of uh, transactions. Me personally, I would look into creative finance, seller finance and subject to right. lease options, things like that to be able to do it, arbitraging your way into doing it like we spoke about before. Um, all of these are different ways to get these deals locked in you know, funded. And uh, as long as you're executing on the other end, you run your numbers, 
and it makes sense, you can move forward with doing something like this, right? Absolutely. Right. Oh, I just was going to say about the creative financing. I think previously when I got started, I knew nothing about um, Airbnb. I think I was just doing it not knowing about any of these methods. So mm -hmm. I, I really feel you know blessed to learn about uh, creative financing, uh, obviously from the Pretty House Guy, because you know I was just uh, winging it, and now I've got some specialized knowledge. So, yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, Aegis is that guy. <laughs> Quick question for you guys. So we talked about finding, funding. What would be the next F? The next F would be, do you know what that one is, Genevieve? Because you know I know what it is. <laughs> the next F would actually be furnishing. Yeah, furnishing, furnishing. The, furnishing the places and everything, okay? So this is something that you can do as well. A lot of the furniture that we get, especially in the beginning to keep our expenses low, um, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, mm -hmm. Garage Sales, goodwill we'll just look for um well-used furniture that really keeps our costs down now there's some things you do have to come to park and you do need brand new things but um in the right. beginning you'll be amazed at how many people will give away free furniture online if you're available to come pick it up yep um so there's a there's a variety of ways. so now obviously this does depend on the market as well so if I'm in an upscale neighborhood, I'm not going to be able to put a lot of um, used stuff in there unless it looks a certain way. So I would have to have a budget to be able to buy things, and it may have to be brand new. But for those who are getting started who have a limited budget, I would look at, like I said, garage sales, Facebook Marketplace, um, Goodwill, Craigslist, things of that nature. You can find That's an excellent really way to do it. Mm -hmm. You can find some really nice items. Sometimes people are just simply having to move and they've got new, you know, right. very mm -hmm. gently used items uh, that look like new. So, you know, don't uh, disregard it. I mean, it's really, um, you know, uh, just a real uh, good source of items that you can put in the home that look really nice. So Absolutely. you've been able to do that. Have you guys been using Net30 accounts at all in order yeah. to be able to we have. fund these, uh, these places? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know what a net 30 is, it's basically a credit line from um, any type of furniture store or any right. type of store for that matter. It could be any type of creditor. Um, and your bill won't do, it won't be due for at least 30 days after right. you made the purchase. So that gives you enough time to make some money yep. and then pay that bill right off. You know what I mean? So uh, these are all great ways to, to make it happen, right? Um, you got the furniture... Um, the garage sales, the uh, the uh, you know, the the secondhand furniture. Mm -hmm. right. We got net thirty accounts, mm -hmm. things like that. Think creatively, think outside the box. That's what right. you do as an investor to be able to maximize your profit and minimize your workload. All right. right. So so we we got find, fun, furnish. What was the final F? The final F. Before I get to that, there's one other thing that I want the uh, listeners to do as well. Like I said, if you're on a limited budget. One of the things that you can do also, and Jamel kind of alluded to this, is you don't have to furnish the whole house before you bring people into it. Furnish one room. Now you got one person moving in bringing you some cash. Now go to the next room. Now you got another person bringing you some cash. Now you got the third room. Somebody bring you some cash, especially if you can get you a net 30 account. So you can do this from room to room to room, and by the end of the month, you can have all of your vacancies filled up and now you are maximizing cash flow, which gets a segue into the last F, which is fill. How do we fill these properties up? How do we get individuals in who are going to be paying us on a weekly basis? And the way that we fill these properties is our favorite, believe it or not, is Craigslist. Craigslist, man. <laughs> Craigslist has, it has two sections. They have a sublet section, and then they have a um, they have a rooms for rent section. So we use that. Yeah, you can do here. Facebook Marketplace. That's another one you can do. Another thing that you can do is you can put out bandit signs. Rooms for rent, free Wi-Fi, disability, SSI accepted, um, then your phone number. Another thing that um, Genevieve and I have done is we've gone by these extended stay hotels. Because a lot of people who are working, like they may be doing a contract job, they get a per diem to stay somewhere. We're like, look, right. you can just stay in one of our places and then pocket the change. 
You know, your per diem to stay in those extended stays, some of these people are paying, you know, five, six hundred dollars every single week. Whereas with us, you're only gonna be paying two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars. That's an additional three, four hundred dollars in your pocket every single week. So so what are you doing? Going to the front desk and saying, Hey, who's staying here long term? So there's two ways that we do that, okay? <laughs> All right. So one of the ways is we have to make a friend with that front desk person. We kind of just kind of fill them out and everything. And basically, they become a bird dog for us. We pay them a referral fee. And now the next thing, another thing that we'll do, we're aggressive. We'll put a bandit sign right there near that extended stay hotel. Yeah. Now, now, I'm going to tell you something that we need to do that we have not done yet is, um, you know, when you go to the shopping mall, somebody will put like a little flyer in your windshield. Mm -hmm. Or you can even put them on the door. Put them on the, yep. You put them on the door. You can put them on the, the windshield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the parking lot. Yep. Great yeah. Job, man. That's good yeah. stuff. I will, I will add too about the furniture and even just getting referrals. You know, develop relationships with, you know, social workers. Um, just right. even this morning, we had a new contact um, from, from the, the VA, VA. Um, yep. where now um, they're giving uh, Section 8 vouchers to the veterans. And it's it's for single room occupancies where, where before mm. Section Eight was, you know, for the entire home. So right. they all they want to know is, are you willing to take um, the the Section Eight voucher? And absolutely, because that's guaranteed income, and and that's kind of more where you know I started was guaranteed income. And Idris mm -hmm. always, uh, you know, he always brags on on my situation is that yeah. I didn't miss a payment, you know, during the COVID because. Every, you know, most of my people, they had, um, you know, disability. So that's guaranteed mm -hmm. from the government. So um, don't shy away from those individuals. They want to be stable and uh, they're going to pay, you know. Um, you're also creating an environment where they can live in a nice home um, mm -hmm. that they wouldn't generally be able to afford on their income. So, you know, if you are not being a slumlord and you're creating these nice homes, um, people are going to, you know, Overall, they're going to appreciate um, and and be happy to uh, be there, and you won't have a lot of turnover because you know they're stable and it's a nice home. And, That's exactly and what my next question was. Mm -hmm. You know how how are you like how are these homes? What's the condition of some of these properties? Well, I mean, I would know, live there. Uh, they're very know. nice. Yeah, er, like for me, um, we haven't had to do any. So we haven't had to do any rehabs whatsoever. We may have had like every now and again an appliance may go out, or a furnace may go out, we may need to replace a refrigerator, you know, um, so some of those things will happen. However, we have not had any, uh, on the front end, we haven't done any repairs whatsoever. The only way that I would be open to something like that is that I'm able to acquire a house at a substantial discount. But otherwise, right. um, these these because remember we're getting these houses from landlords, so they're moving ready. Got it. Mm -hmm. How do you guys handle collecting, let's say, security deposits and things like that? We collect <laughs> you know, it. <laughs> we, how much are you guys collecting? Um, it, it, primarily with this model, um, it's half of the the rental monthly. Okay. So if it's eight hundred, it. four hundred. And then there's Got a non-refundable um, cleaning uh, fee, and then there's a, a refundable um, deposit upon a, a you know positive move out. Got it. So what's that cleaning fee looking like? Is it a percentage, or is there a certain it, it is, it's amount? Half, it's half of the. So if it's four hundred, it's two hundred. Got it. Got it. So mm -hmm. that's how you guys are doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you let them move in, it, it's always on the first, I'm sure, or do you prorate mm -hmm. the rent if it's midway through the month or something well, like that? Well, well, it varies. So some people want to pay weekly, bi-weekly, mm -hmm. or monthly. I prefer monthly. Um, so it, it's something that we discuss on the front end. Um, but, yeah, they can move. If the, if the room is available, they can move in today. So what's the actual startup cost to do something like this? You, you need to have the electronic locks. You need to have certain things in play, mm -hmm. furniture sometimes. What, what does somebody really need to have access to in order to be able to 
get this going. So I would On say. The go ahead. Well, go ahead, go ahead well, I would I say is. Um, so these, these these are the expenses that you have to, uh, that you have to have initially. Okay. Now, if you're not partnering with the um, owner of the house, you're going to need to cover more than likely a security deposit plus the prorate of the first month's rent. Um, you also need the deposits for the utilities because you're switching all the utilities to your name. So you need to, uh, I'm gonna, this is what we have in our houses. Um, you need to have the internet. You need to have your, um, you know, water, trash, as well as electricity and then gas if there's gas there. So those are the main expenses. Um, I, right, because you're paying all the you're paying all utilities. I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So okay. we are. So you're factoring, are you factoring that into the rent as well? No. No. Okay. So we're um, no. That's just um, something. Um, that's why we run the numbers to ensure that we will be profitable. Now, <laughs> I will tell people to do this now. Okay. Especially if you're in an area where. Uh, the temperatures can be quite volatile, so basically it's very cold in the winter and very hot in the summertime. They're going to mess with that thermostat. So you need to get a box on it and lock it, or you need to get something like a Nest. And I think there's some other ones on the marketplace that are electronic that you can control from an app. And that way, because otherwise, if you allow those um, individuals in your house to regulate that temperature, oh, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, that bill is going to be very, very, very expensive. So we uh, we fix it. We use Nest. We fix the temperature, and then we'll make minor adjustments as uh, we transition from winter into spring. Yeah, I do that with my kids, man. You know, my my kids they love to play around with the thermostat. I got I got an app. You know what I mean? Because we have multiple units in my house, right? And you know, one one part of the house might have. You know, it might be hot and then one kid got the AC on downstairs right. and I'm like, look, so I look <laughs> on the app and just adjust the temperature, man. So imagine doing that with tenants, right? Right. You know, I, I can only imagine that. So there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, um, when you run your numbers, how are you setting your your rent prices? How are you coming up with that number? You want to go to the beat? Well, I, I do it based on location, but then also uh, according to what, you know, I want to make and then what mm -hmm. is going to cover, you know, all of the utilities. But sometimes it's a little bit of a um, kind of a, a learning curve because initially you might not know what those utilities are going to be monthly. So as you mm -hmm. begin to see now, I, I did um, pivot and made a change um, as to where I think we were doing the rooms uh, over this is in Stone Mountain. We were doing those at 700 initially, mm -hmm. and then I I changed converted to you know to 800. So and obviously, if you're charging too little, people are probably going to be hitting you up hardcore. But if you're charging too much, they're not. So you want to find that fine medium. Yeah, that medium. Um, you know what yep. I mean? To where you you know you know that this is the sweet spot right there. Right. right. Is there anything else that our listeners need to know in order to get started doing this, guys? Yeah. Um, another thing I would say is to maximize profitability, remember, you have to think about amenities as well. So if someone's in the, we call them now owner suite, but master bedroom, they have their own bathroom, that's a premium. If there's another bedroom that has its own bathroom, so we have a house where there's three bedrooms upstairs and there's one bedroom downstairs, but there's a bathroom right next to it, they're going to, um, the, we're going to charge them a premium. If they're going to be able to park their cars in the garage or whatever, that's a premium. So there's different things that you can do to actually even a parking space, right? Increase your revenue. You know, if you need some, if you need some storage space in a storage house or whatever, you can pay for a premium. If you want an extra refrigerator in your room or whatever, like a little micro fridge unit, you can charge extra um, for that as a premium. Mm -hmm. So right, yeah. Man. I've definitely done that uh, where I had a lady who rented a room and then she needed to store all of her items. And yes, I, it mm. was it was an additional. I think it was like I charged her seventy five dollars a month for it because I mean she that's what she's gonna pay at the storage unit. Right. Place. It's cheaper than storage, as a matter of fact. So, 
Well, well, yeah. So this, well, based on what she had, it was cheaper for her to, you know, and she wanted it with her too. So mm -hmm. she, yeah. so you had a shed or something in the back, and she was able to rent it. Gotcha. Well, I'll say in this instance, I had a huge closet. It was a, a gotcha. super huge closet in the home. Uh, that and and then she had some of the garage. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't give them any closet space when they're renting, or? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. But this was this was for outside of the room. this was outside of her room. So she had a room with a closet, but this was for storing items. She had more, you know, because she this particular mm -hmm. individual was divorced. So she had, you know, gotcha. a lot, a lot more uh, things. So I'm like, if you're going to bring it here. You know, you have to, you know, compensate. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's your property, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you guys have been doing a lot on social media lately. Um, I see you have. A video going semi-viral at this point um, talking about how you got paid 32 times on one residential property again not a commercial apartment complex at all this is not a 32 unit apartment complex this is one single family property getting paid 32 times right. in a month's time you guys got a lot going on on your different uh, channels and things like that you want to share how our listeners can get in contact with you Oh, okay, on social media, um, mm -hmm. you can reach me on uh, Instagram, it's Body by Jen, and then on Facebook, it's Jen Small, and then on TikTok, it's Body by Jen 16. So. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm, I'm going to make sure I link that in the description box for okay. you guys to be able to get in contact with Jen. What about you, Idris? Mine, every social media, the pretty house guy. Instagram, Facebook. Um, TikTok, and then just my name on LinkedIn, Idris Talk. But um, yeah, check us out, and uh, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, are you guys reading any books right now that's helping you further along your business? Yes. Um, so one of the books that I'm reading right now, and um, this is really helping us with our business, it's called Build a Business, Not a Job. And with that book, it's really, um, it's like the, it's, it's similar to the E-Myth, but it's a little bit different. I'm also reading Atomic Habits as well. So those are the two books that I'm reading. Got it. And Genevieve, any? Well, I, I'm reading the, the first one that he indicated along with him. And then uh, something else that Idris uh, got us involved in is uh, public speaking. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. So you joined the Toastmasters Club, huh? <laughs> a little something different. Um, quick question for you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, public speaking to me, you know, I've been doing that for, for years, just like Idris. Um, to me, it helps you to build character, and it really helps you um, to understand people a lot better as well. You learn how to communicate with people a lot more when you when you are uh, speaking from in front of the room. You know what I mean? You get to read crowds, you get to read right. people and know what to say at the right times. That's why I love public speaking. We actually did an event a couple years ago during the pandemic um, that was pretty successful. Mm -hmm. um, me, Idris, and a, and, a, and a bunch of our friends. And uh, we plan on doing a lot more coming up. So you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, if you had to provide our, listen, our listeners with some last words of advice, what would those words be? I would say just step out on faith and, you know, go ahead and just take action. Um, you know, the best teacher is to just, you know, start, you know, try it out and you'll get better with time. Uh, I can't say that I wasn't nervous at times, you know, because before it was my own house. But, you know, um, it's OK. You know, people are looking for solutions and take uh, confidence in that you're helping, um, you know, provide housing solutions. You're helping the owner as well as you're helping people out here who are looking for um, somewhere to live. Right. That's right. And Idris? My big thing, Conway Jimby said, do not wait, take action. Go out and take action. Now, everything's not going to be perfect. If you come across any type of stumbling block or challenge or whatever, Go to Jamel's YouTube channel. He has so many videos in every single area of real estate. You know, we also, you know, contact us on social media. You know, all of us have different programs and stuff that we do. But at the same time, just, just you have to take action. 
Um, do not become an overeducated, you know, person. You know, go out, take action because you can make money in this business. No matter where you are financially, no matter where you are in the country, people have to have a place to live. This is a recession-proof business. And it's creating financial freedom for all of us. And we want you to come along on the journey. Absolutely. So what I've heard you guys say um, in this uh, final closing is, number one, you got to take action. Be a problem solver, right? There's solutions to every problem. You got to be the problem solver, right. whether it be for the landlord or for the tenant. Right. And also, don't allow yourself to become a shelf help type of person become a self help type of person right? <laughs> right do what you're learning don't be a learner without a doer the doer right. is always more effective than a learner exactly right so uh the only way to get from where you are to where you want to go is to actually do the that's business right. right and that's what i got from what you guys were saying mm -hmm. and i totally co-sign both of those statements and i'm going to encourage you guys to keep pushing, keep taking action, keep moving forward towards whatever that goal is for yourself. Because the minute you stop, it's the minute you stop chasing what it is that you're looking for, right? So you got to keep going, keep taking action until you hit the, the target, until right. you hit the goal. Find something that's bigger than yourself. Right. You know, find something that, that you can look forward to every day to help you push through these through these walls when, when things get tough, right? But you got to stay in the game. And I'm not going to let you guys quit. So keep coming back to this podcast. Keep watching these videos. Uh, check out Idris and um, uh, Genevieve online. Follow them. I definitely think that you need to be uh, you need to be implementing what they're doing right now with this rooming house situation. Let's call it shared living. That sounds a lot better. Yes. <laughs> and um, honestly, it's just a way to get multiple bags every single week. Every single month, it's crazy. Okay, one residential yes. property. Fantastic right. opportunity that everybody needs to be taking advantage of. I hope you guys benefited from today's podcast. Uh, let me know if you want to have them back. All right, I'm I'm happy to elaborate to expand more in this conversation. But uh, based on your feedback, we'll we'll make that happen. I'll see you guys on the next one.